Hello everyone and welcome to video 9.1, Capacity, Organizational and Support Issues with respect to online learning implementation. Instead of doing three video clips for this week, I thought I would just combine it all into one because really these three aspects are so interwoven and interconnected it makes it very hard to pull them apart. Going into this uh, video clip, I'd like to, to consider the different types of capacity issues that might be a challenge when you're implementing online learning and just jot some of those down. And then how tightly do you think that organizational and support issues are connected? Once you've had a chance to jot those down, then let's just take a look at this. This is a, the, just a standard ADDIE model, uh, common used in instructional design, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. But this one is nice because it's blown out in more detail with respect to the creation of online video games and you can get a little bit more at that website below. Uh, what I like this diagram for actually is, is both of those things, but more importantly, um, the way it's laid out, it allows you to look at the different pieces of the pie, so to speak, and consider all of the capacity issues or challenges or opportunities that would be within each of those different pieces of the pie. So for example, in that upper right, the analysis, organizational assessment, strategic planning, what types of capacity issues are going to raise their heads there and how will the organization or how does the sector tend to handle that? So for example, some of the ones that they flagged in the outer ring are cost-benefit analysis, performance standards, skills knowledge gaps. Well, in higher ed, we have performance standards, we know the gaps, we have some lovely people in finance who do cost-benefit analysis. In corporate, depending on where you are in corporate, performance standards might not be there. Competencies might not be there yet. So those have to be created first before you can then go ahead and build this online uh, learning model, potentially. And so there's a, a highlight of a capacity issue that's worth identifying and then developing a strategy for mitigating the risk that that may have in your implementation. So what I'd like you to do is take some time to look at each, each aspect of the pie, think of your specific sector, and that'll help you to flag some of the outer ring comments, will help you to flag, oh right, how would they deal with, with that in my sector? How do they do learning modules if I'm looking at healthcare, if I'm looking at K-12? to Who does that? Is it provincially mandated? Is it up to the individual teacher? Um, so those, this is sort of a, a jumping off point, the tip of the iceberg, as you start to think about some capacity issues that might raise their heads when you're implementing online learning. This next one is a model for planning for student support in open and distance learning. It's done by Tate. The reference is there if you would like to look it up in the library database. Uh, it's well cited and well used, and I've put a link here to another article that uses Tate uh, around evaluating an online student induction and support package for online learner learners. And they use this framework as part of their evaluation protocol. And so this will provide you, again, the tip of the iceberg to all of the different pieces that need to be considered in just student support for online learning. There's also faculty support. There's organizational support. And so this will give you a good uh, opportunity to explore the student one. This one I've put in here because I thought it was useful, um, again, sort of speaking to that operation, operational, excuse me, op, uh, organizational support around the rapid design. So this is more of an instructional design approach, but it is often used in the hurry up and wait um, environment of creating online learning. And so if you think of each of these phases and how this would roll out through preparation to this iterative design and iterative development, what kind of constraints does that then put on your system, um, both from the organizational standpoint, the faculty, the support uh, standpoint? What type of constraints are you putting on that system and how can you mitigate them? So again, this is just one of those, hmm, let me start the conversation thinking here and tease out some of the other considerations that we need to be looking at. I then left you with a list of some resources and starting points. And given that you're all going in different directions with your PBL, um, I'll let you do this as a bit more of a pick list. But just to give you a sense, the first article is a really nice article, 2005. Um, 
measuring readiness for e-learning so that notion of how do you measure organizational readiness for e-learning what does that look like this is set in the context of an emerging country of Turkey so it has a different layer to it but some of the categories that they touch and certainly the literature that they speak to will be very very useful I've also put a link into um, a take on Checklin soft systems methodology this is a very very useful strategy hands-on on the ground um, let's work it through strategy almost a recipe uh, to take a look at all of the impacts and the uh, web that is created when you're looking at doesn't have to just be online learning um, but in this case I would suggest you put that at the center and so you'll be able to see how this methodology plays out on, at that link I've also put a link back to the Bates and Sangra book. They have some nice pieces around organizational and leadership readiness for online learning. Um, if you have the book, chapters 4 and 5 are great. The executive summary also teases some of those pieces out. And then the Athabasca link is dated. It's an older book online, but they do talk about the considerations for developing an infrastructure for online learning. Apologies, that should say an, not and. Um, and so in there you can see some of their big bucket categories that they consider and some suggestions for moving forward. And the last one, again a little bit dated, but provides you a sense of from the organization and management point of view, how can you frame open and distance learning. So it's a bit broader than just online. They also include distance. Uh, but again, it will give you some, some jumping off points there. So I encourage you to, again, use this as a pick list, pick and choose, but these resources I think will be quite valuable as you go forward, examining capacity issues, examining organizational issues, and some support issues. What I'd like to leave you with is the question of, are there ever times when these three issues can be addressed independently when you're attempting to effectively implement online learning? If so, when? And if not, why? So I'd like to spend some time in our tutorial discussion talking about that and seeing if we can tease them apart or are they just inextricably linked.